Greetings. Here we have another interesting question from antennas and propagation. Uh, this question comes under linear wide antennas or dipole antennas. You see a lambda by 2 dipole antenna situated with its center at the origin radiates a time averaged power of 600 watts okay, and at a frequency of 300 megahertz. A second lambda by 2 dipole antenna is placed with its center at a point some p uh, given its spherical coordinates uh, p of r theta phi where r is 200 meters theta 90 and azimuthal angle phi equal to 40 degree. It is oriented so that its axis is parallel to that of transmitting antenna. Now what is available power at the terminals of the second or receiving dipole antenna okay so there is no big deal uh, there is no big deal in this question uh, thing is that you have two antennas antenna number one and antenna number two okay now anyways axis of these two antennas are running parallel so we can position these two antennas in this fashion for now now you see in this question there is uh, no need of uh, this information theta equal to 90 and phi equal to 40 degree because in this question he is asking us what this receiver antenna is receiving what amount of power this fellow is receiving receiver antenna is receiving right okay and now this fellow is this transmitter antenna is radiating some power but he is not asking us to compute E and H fields. If he, if he is asking us to find electric and magnetic fields in the far field region or Fraunhofer region from this transmitter antenna, then we can take care of this elevation angle and azimuthal angle into consideration, otherwise not required. So this is just extra piece of information. Uh, we will try to, we will try to disobey these two or we will just leave them like that. Theta equal to 90, phi equal to 40 degree. So always uh, adjust your data properly and we can knuckle down to solve this uh, beautiful question you see. Uh, I have a transmitter antenna, I have uh, a dipole, okay so let me take a, uh, this is transmitter antenna and let me take a receiver antenna, receiver antenna is again a dipole. Uh, dipole of length lambda by 2 okay so now the axis of this antenna this is my transmitter antenna and this fellow so this fellow is my uh, this fellow is my receiver antenna so the axis of these two antennas are running parallel and also what we have is that the separation distance between these two r is equal to 200 meters okay so the radial distance or this r equal to we have 200 meters now he is saying that this lambda by 2 uh, this lambda by 2 dipole transmitter antenna situated with its center at the origin so we don't require for now uh, taking uh, in this uh, geometry so what he mean to say is this so if, we, if it is g axis if this is the meaning okay if it is x this is y so your uh, transmitter dipole antenna center is at origin okay this is at origin like this now here we can give the feed whatever ac source we can give through a transmission line or a waveguide whatever so we don't require uh, this end for now now we just require to find this fellow this transmitter antenna is radiating this power 600 watt okay and as it is a real quantity this is what radiated power okay so now the operating frequency is given to you like this so the operating frequency is given to us 300 megahertz okay so frequency is 300 megahertz so from this operating wavelength, operating wavelength we can find lambda is equal to c over f, c is speed of light, we can assume uh, 3 times 10 power 8 meter per second over 300 megahertz, 300 megahertz 10 power 6, so these two are ruled out, so therefore lambda is equal to 1 meter, yeah. 
so lambda is equal to 1 meter that means this is my operating wavelength of uh, transmitter antenna so uh, this fellow is radiating power at this frequency so anyways length of this antenna length of transmitter antenna is given to us lambda by 2 okay and mr receiver antenna is also having a length lambda by 2 this is pole 1 this is pole 2 so therefore the name dipole anyways now see uh, this fellow is radiating power so i can observe real power that is transversal to this antenna only in the far field or front half region so we will check whether or not this available distance is in the far field okay so that is we will take uh, one more and we will check it out okay this is very simple so our, our point of interest is whether or not we are in the far fields uh, zone that we have to investigate now so far fields can be observed at the distance r greater than 2d square by lambda where d is what in this case lambda by 2 or d or l whatever this d is transversal dimensions or transversal length of uh, your antenna see we are not taking longitudinal length of antenna we are just taking transversal length of uh, antenna you see if it is your uh, antenna whatever antenna we have like this transversal means you see your waves will oscillate like this here okay your waves will just go like this this way your waves will go so transverse to this uh, antenna so this is my transversal uh, length or transversal dimension of my antenna say anyways okay far phase r is observed like this so therefore let's try to plug in so 2d squared by lambda so what is d so d is lambda by 2 so lambda by 2 squared by lambda so we get lambda squared by lambda squared by what we get 2 so 2 2 is out by 2 lambda so lambda lambda out we got lambda by 2 and we obtain lambda is equal to we obtained 1 meter so you plug in lambda equal to 1 meter here so this is 1 by 2 so this is 0 0.5 meter that means far field can be observed so far field can be observed say from here if you travel from here if you travel uh, this r say this is say 0 0.5 meter okay from here to here this is some 0 0.5 meter so here we can observe far field that means from here to here this everything so this everything comes under uh, this far field or front half a region now but we have r equal to 200 meters so anyways r equal to 200 meters so your receiver antenna is at this uh, distance from the transmitter antenna this is far greater than 0 0.5 meters so anyways your receiver antenna is in the far field region so definitely he can try to capture some power uh, from the transmitter antenna okay now that power okay that power uh, keeps on travel in free space uh, okay uh, it keeps on travel in free space and then available power and then available power at the receiver available power at the receiver antenna or receiver dipole antenna is equal to what now yeah i can just go for fris uh, equation so the receiver antenna we can take like this say power available at the receiver antenna is lambda over 4 pi r see we have to take lambda by 4 pi r yeah because of what reason here because your uh, your waves or you know your radiation whatever you have uh, that will spread across yeah those spreading losses we have to take into account anyways so in this problem we will not investigate that so I'll just take maximum gain of transmitter antenna multiplied by maximum gain of uh, receiver antenna okay this is what uh, first equation we have 
uh, this uh, this fact we are well aware of and now the same equation the same power received by the receiver antenna is equal to we can write in terms of directivity see in the given question nowhere in the given question they mentioned about losses right see in the question there is uh, nothing about losses here so therefore we can assume these two antennas are lossless antennas if those two antennas are lossless antennas then gain becomes directivity so directivity and gain both are same so in that case i can take uh, as we have lossless antennas so multiplied by maximum directivity of transmitter antenna multiplied by maximum directivity of receiver antenna all right so because we have assumed lossless antennas now for lambda by 2 dipole if you take lambda by 2 dipole let me take uh, lambda by 2 dipole for lambda by 2 dipole maximum directivity maximum directivity is approximately equal to what 1.643 on linear scale if you take in decibels you will get around 2.15 decibels okay so as both transmitter and receiver antennas both are lambda by 2 dipoles and that too they are lossless so we could take maximum directivity of uh, those two antennas as 1.643 on linear scale so therefore you see directivity has no units it is dimensionless so therefore power received by the receiver antenna rx means like receiver is lambda by 4 pi r whole square now what is lambda lambda is equal to 1 meter so you plug in lambda equal to 1 there 1 by 4 pi don't take r equal to 0 0.5 at 0 0.5 you have far field region beginning here but in the question he is asking us to find somewhere at r is equal to 200 meters so therefore you take r equal to 200 meter so 4 pi multiplied by 200 just whole square multiplied by maximum directivity of our transmitter lambda by 2 dipole antenna multiplied by maximum directivity of our received or our receiver uh, dipole antenna okay you just work it out and this is what your answer obviously this will be less than 600 watts okay transmitter antenna is transmitting 600 watt the receiver antenna whatever uh, this fellow whatever power he is capturing available uh, in the nearby region this will be always less than uh, the transmitted power 600 watt you should know this the moment you go beyond the, if it is my antenna the moment you go beyond like this power density will vary i have a good power density here power density will get weaker here further power density will become weak further like this but in this case, see but in this case the power whatever power it is carrying here the power will always remain same power density will keep on decrease but not power yeah conservation of energy or power is very important so but end of the day what happens is that what amount it could capture is important okay so therefore we are dealing with these aperture radius all these things so in our uh, subsequent discussions we will try to unlock uh, you know physical insights of antennas so that's it for today that's it for today so thank you very much for your patience okay so please do watch things until the end okay and please share your thoughts in the comment section below bye